Welcome back everybody, welcome to the last TicTic lesson of this course in which we'll be covering how to review and reflect on everything. This is where we'll dive into the bottom five lists that we've created initially. So we have the reference list, the areas of focus list, goals, vision and purpose. Starting off today with goals. So these are items that you want to achieve of course that may have several projects required to achieve them. In other words, preferably a sort of measurable outcome that you're going for. My recommendation is to just use tasks for this particular view. You can create separate goals by creating a task and you could include measurable outcomes as subtasks, for example. This allows you to really set goals in a smart way. So you could include uh, a deadline for the goal as well, of course. These are, for all intents and purposes, just tasks too. So if you want to make sure to not view them in things like your Eisenhower matrix, you could then make sure that in the filtering, you exclude the goals lists. Now here we did it the other way around. We just included the actionable lists. If you haven't yet, make sure to do so. So when it comes to goals, this is to me an interesting way to keep it up to date. For areas of focus, vision and purpose, what we'll actually want to do is use notes, which we haven't dived into very deeply just yet. So here's an example of how that looks. I already created a note here. This is a note list. So any item in here will be a note by default. We could define our work, for example. What are the responsibilities I have in my job? Now I could note it down here on the right hand side, but Honestly, TickTick really has a more immersive experience as well when it comes to text editing. What you could do, it's a bit hidden, but under text formats, you can already see what you can do, like apply headings, bolts, markup with highlights, lists, etc. But here you can go into the immersive writing mode. And from there, you can see it's really an immersive experience. You could write down more than just quick notes here, really. You can write books here if you want to whole articles. So it's really cool to see that TickTick really has the note taker implementation on point as well. So really for areas of focus, your vision and your purpose, it's a matter of defining them and reviewing them with some regularity to make sure they still align with, you know, what you're trying to do, what you're trying to achieve. For reference, this is really where we dive into the tags one last time. Because as you know, we have already defined our context in the previous lesson, next actions and waiting for items, and a combination of those leads to specific actionable filters. However, for reference, I prefer to just use one list and use tags as the main way to sort for them. The reason for this is many items can have multiple tags associated with it. So if we were to go with a list-based approach, that would just become a lot more difficult. In the end, it's up to you. Do whatever works best for you, but I'm gonna show you just how I use it. For example, let's take the read item that we had on our list here and assume that it is something we wanna save for later. So it's an article, for example. In this case, it was actually an email and the link still contains a link to that particular email to read whenever we want. We need to do a couple of things here. Instead of ticking it off and marking it complete, we want to store it into the reference list. So first of all, we select the task and we move it into the reference list. Now we can see it has its first item in there. But since the item is no longer actionable, we also need to change some of the markup. First of all, we need to convert this task into a note. This is something we can do by right-clicking it and pressing Convert to Note. Now we, con we cannot complete it anymore and we avoid the risk of accidentally removing it from the reference list. And lastly, we want to adjust the tagging because we don't want this to show up in any of our filters, but we also don't want to lose it completely either. So just leaving it empty like this, especially if your library builds up further and further with hundreds of items, it's going to be tough. So we want to add a new type of tag. For example, let's give it the headphone tag because that's the project it was originally related to. Let's assume we want to store information about headphones. We give this the yellow color or any color of your choice really. Personally, I always give it yellow if it's a reference item. And that is it. We converted a task into 
a reference material item and from the tag knowing that yellow always means reference we can easily find anything to do with headphones if we choose to do so and so the assignment for you in this lesson is to think about what kind of information do you want to store it can be simple as this example here shows it can also be more elaborate for example, what if you want to store certain attachments with your notes? You can do that too by uploading it here. So things like a passport copy uh, come to mind here, other PDF files, anything. You can choose how to then tag those. Perhaps you can create separate tags for the specific file types. And there you go. You have a full reference library ready to view and filter right from the list or obviously through the tags on the left-hand side. The last thing I wanted to show when it comes to reviewing is something that will come really handy for things like your weekly review, but also support material, which again has to do with notes. So let's add something to the inbox just to quickly show it. We convert it into a note. And from there, we see that we now have the option to add something from a template. So here on clicking this link you can see there's a few already in the system these are default templates such as a book summary what was the title who was the author what are your takeaways and inspirations but you can actually create anything and set it to become a template so what about certain checklists for your travels right do you want to make sure you don't forget your passport and your wallet for example and through markup here, we can then turn those into like checkboxes, which is not the same as a task, and that's not what it's meant to be, but then we can kind of create a ch travel checklist. And now if we save this as a template here, we can always come back to that whenever we have a new trip coming up. So let's create trip to Mexico. From there, we make sure to convert it to a note add from template and now it's here the travel checklist has been pre-created by us and we can easily find it so super powerful stuff really good way to also do your weekly reviews for example uh, but any kind of checklist you can also store it in reference of course and so this is really what makes or breaks your system in my opinion so i hope this shows you the vast possibilities that TikTok offers as a complete hub for everything in your life honestly from tasks to projects to goals but also reference material as we've just seen in this lesson and that concludes our course on tick tick i hope it was valuable to you and i hope that you are more comfortable with using the tool and getting everything out of it really that was my objective here making sure you're aware of the power that it can give you and use it for getting things done if you have any questions at all about this tool or about GTD, just let me know in the comments. I know I've said this in every lesson so far, but I really mean it. I'm happy to help. And it actually helps others too to learn from questions that you have because you're probably not the only one with that question. So I really look forward to your feedback, questions or comments. Let me know about them. Thank you for finishing this course. Congratulations. And I'll see you in the next video.